A few weeks ago, an idea was pitched to me that I should create my own operating systems. Backyard tech style. Well, one of the two operating systems is now being put together. Let's get into it. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Well, as I said, some good friends of the Backyard Tech Channel suggested I should create my own operating systems. Forks of two of them. One of them being a Unix operating system and the other one being a fork of one of my favorite Linux operating systems. And last night during the weekend live stream conversations for a Saturday, I informed those that were on the stream at the time that the Unix operating system I was starting to put together. I'm going to head over, I'm going to show you what I'm up to at the moment. But essentially, what I'm going to start to do is using FreeBSD, and I've still got a lot of testing to do to see whether or not this is actually going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to use FreeBSD 11 and put KDE 4 on it. Then I'm going to add some of the applications that I use regularly, both in GhostBSD but also in OpenBSD as well. And I'm going to create my own BTBSD using FreeBSD. Now, it's going to be a while before I get this ready to release. I've obviously got to sort out how I go about it, but initially I'm going to create my own FreeBSD operating system. If this works the way I think it might work and I can actually get it to work both as a desktop and a server, if I can apply it to the V490, I can make my own server OS as well. But initially, I'm going to create my own desktop OS using FreeBSD. Now, I do need to talk to a few people to find out how I go about doing it all, but initially, I'm going to build the operating system, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. And um, basically, long and short of it, FreeBSD 11, KDE 4, because 5's not yet ready for it. I'm not going to be trying to compile it myself. I want to get this going. And I'm going to add in some tools that I use regularly, daily, across all the operating systems I, I use here at home. So let me take you over to the main PC, and I'll show you what I'm up to. All right. So what I'm doing here at the moment, which I will explain... Right at this point in time, I am getting the complete KDE 4 package and the Xorg package as well, the whole lot, okay? So, right at this point in time, it's downloading. You see here, I've got 789 packages to get my hands on, which is fine. Then I've obviously got to add the um, add some lines into the rc.conf, or it's either rc.conf or rc.local. I don't know. I've got to work it out. But basically, we're going to have a complete KDE 4 package. I'm then going to set up a graphical package manager in a similar way to GhostBSD, but not totally. Okay, so I'm not going to... Um, it's not going to look the same. All right. Then what we're going to do, I'm going to install a web browser. I'm going to install an Office application, probably LibreOffice. Um, and some of the networking tools that I use, and we're going to, I've already named the machine, it's already called BTBSD, um, and essentially I'm going to make my own FreeBSD operating system with my own selected packages and my own um, feel to it. Now, I've obviously got to talk to a few people, uh, one's a very good friend of mine from France who, as for all my regular viewers will know, the guy's a fountain of knowledge in electro scavenger. Do not forget, all, to all my new subscribers, please go and subscribe to electro scavenger's uh, YouTube channel. If you need help with anything, he's the one to go to without a shadow of a doubt. Shadow of a doubt. In the fair income dead set department. So... What we're going to initially start off with is KDE4, 
Um, I'm going to get a graphical package manager. I'm going to get some of the networking tools that I use, some of the office tools, a web browser, some audio stuff as well. So I'm building it in a virtual environment at the moment to test it all. And if it all goes well, then with one of the SFFs behind me, I'll put it onto hardware. Now, you're probably then going to say, well, hang on, Backyard, how are you going to launch this? I've still got to work out how to create a restoration image. That's what I've got to work out. I need to speak to um, Electro Scavenger about it because he's the wealth of knowledge and um, he's offered to help me build this. Now, this is the Unix OS that I'm building. Okay, so I'm going to create my own FreeBSD OS. Now, I'm using FreeBSD because OpenBSD to me is for a server. That's my personal opinion. I know you're all going to hound me now and sit there and go, you can use, you know, those of us who use OpenBSD, you're all going to hound me by saying, but you can use OpenBSD as a, as a desktop system. I know, but I'm, I'm using FreeBSD for this because if I'm going to start making my own operating system forks and my own operating systems, I want to use more of a desktop orientated operating system from my point of view. Now, all the BSD nuts are out there are going to clobber me for this. But I, I thought I, I've, I've spoken to people who've suggested that free BSD would probably be easier for me if I'm going to create my own operating system. It might be easier for me to create it from free BSD than to create it from, say, open or net, okay, I, I, I shouldn't have to justify it, but I will, now, you're probably then going to say, well, Backyard, you're creating Unix, what are you going to do for Linux, and I, at the moment, I'm not going to worry about Linux yet, because I've got to talk to some other people yet, but for this one, we're just going to worry about creating my own FreeBSD operating system, and as I said, it's going to be completely customised to how I see a Unix OS. Okay, obviously I'm not going to do a Solaris OS. Okay, I'm going to do a BSD OS. Okay, so I'm creating my own custom free BSD system set up as though it was going to become my daily driver. Okay, um, so it's going to have everything I think an operating system should have in it from a user point of view. And obviously I'm going to have to make some changes, we're going to have to get a lot of stuff into it. But once it's ready, then all I've got to do is work out how to cre actually create it. You can see here I'm getting um, ghost source and everything like that. And um, I mean, it's going to be a challenge, don't get me wrong, it will be a, um, it will be a challenge. There's no question about that. It'll be a fairly large challenge. But as you can see here, sorry, as you can see here, I'm using two screens here at the moment. As you, oh, I didn't grab the mouse. Hang on. There we go. As you can see here, I mean, I'm getting everything for KDE, Xorg. Um, I will get audio, video stuff into it as well as a web browser, an email client, and an office application. But primarily, I'm going to also get a lot of network management tools into it as well. And these would be the tools that, if you're an IT person, you're going to use. If you're just a daily driver, well, you're obviously not going to use them, but they're there if you've got problems with your network at home or at work or whatever you feel. So, there's the beginnings of Backyard Techs, first ever take of his own operating system, basically. We'll see how it goes. Don't forget tonight, 7pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time, we'll have the Backyard Tech Livestream Conversations. Until then, as always, we shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.